Ms. McNiff, uh, cross-examination. Thank you. Ms. Harris, do you work? I do. What are your work hours? They're different. Um, usually my busiest time is Monday through Thursday where I do my teaching. And then once in a while on the weekends, I have performances to play in. And when do you have performances on the weekends when your son has the girls? That has happened once, maybe twice. And so, so what, what, what was the interim measure with regard to supervising the girls? What do you mean? If you had a performance and had to work on a weekend when he had the children, did they go with you or were you unable to supervise? Never. I asked my mother to come and stand in my place, okay. which she has always done. Okay. So, so, so your mom, your mom then would be your, your substitute supervisor? Yes. And did you talk to Ms. Wheeler about that when it happened? Um, I told her early on that I had uh, a performance to do, and I did ask her permission if it would be okay if my mom came. I actually did that a couple of times, and she's always okayed it. As a matter of fact, in one of our texts, she told me she trusts my mother. Okay. So it was only a couple of times that that's even occurred? Yes. Was there a time in the last year when you wanted your son to take Macy to a doctor and he didn't want to? Not that I don't recall that conversation. I said Macy needed to see a doctor. She um, came over with, I'm assuming, a UTI. Okay. And did you talk to Ms. Wheeler about that? Um, she had briefly sent me a text saying that she thinks she had one. And did you change anything up, like not use bubble bath in, in the bath? Yes, we didn't. Uh, we didn't use bubble bath. She was in so much pain one day. I just let her sit in a bath of cold water. Then we made sure she was dry. Um, TJ made sure she had. He actually went and got her um, cranberry juice, which is supposed to be good for that. Um, we made her drink a lot. That's that's the only only situation you could think of where she you thought she needed to see a doctor. Yes. I mean, she's come over with a uh, cold, Okay, but we've tried to give her the children's medicine here at home. And Norm you, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Nor normally, when I go to the doctor for myself, or if Jasmine goes to the doctor, and, the, and it's a cold or a flu, they generally don't subscribe or prescribe anything anyway. They say it has to run its course. But... Sure. We try very hard here to get it kicked out quickly. Okay. Now, in during, after that, that Christmas of 22 uh, incident, uh, would you agree that you had sent Ms. Wheeler a text message that said that you were no longer willing to be the supervisor for parenting time? Yes. And and why did you say that? Um, the argument, it, it was pretty bad. Um, and I just felt that... I mean, I'm going to call it tough love. Clearly, TJ was upset over the situation and couldn't see past his heartache that there was a better plan in place. And I wasn't willing to let him just skirt past that argument. Okay. And, and you indicated that... He you weren't on speaking terms with him and that you refused to be around any of them. Do you remember that text? Mm -hmm. Who? Yes. Who were any of them? Who did that include? Uh, that would have been Shelby and her children. And how do you know Shelby Howard? Shelby is um, TJ's girlfriend after Jennifer. Okay. And did, <laughs> um, did your son stay with her? On occasion, yes. Do you have any idea, like how how often he would stay with her when they were together? Um, you mean as in overnights or? Yeah, overnights. A few times a week. And did her children come over to see you? Yes, I grew very fond of her children. And and did she come over when you had uh, your four grandchildren? Yes. How how often would she come over? when you had the, the girls? 
I would say most weekends um, until recently, uh, a lot of times she would go to her sister's. And was she involved in, in this dispute on, on Christmas 2022? She was. How, how was she involved? Um, she was there when the argument took place. And you indicated that you you stayed in bed for a while after that argument because you were so upset. I was very upset. It was Christmas. Uh, Christmas is a stressful time anyway. I knew how he was feeling. I felt bad for him, but I was not happy with the whole situation. And it was very depressing to me. And you stopped, you said you stopped speaking with your son for, for a while after that. Yes. Were, were you, was he still staying with you or did he go and stay with Miss Howard? He went to stay with Miss Howard. For, for how long did he stay with her during that period of time? Um, well, it was Christmas Day when the argument took place or Christmas night. And then we didn't reconcile until the end of January. So he, I'm assuming, was over there that whole time. And did, did your grandchildren continue to come to your house in January? Uh, are you referring to January of Wheeler? Are you correct, are you, correct. Um, they did not. We had set up a Monday time for us to pick them up. I, and Jennifer was willing to let us have them the whole week. So that was the plan. And then when the argument happened, that fell through. I did see them a couple of times before TJ and I reconciled. So would, would you say that your communications during that time and your interactions with Ms. Wheeler were generally cordial and civil? They've always been. Was there any other, has there been any other period of time uh, from the start of your son's relationship with Ms. Howard until it ended that he stayed with her for a week or a month other than that time in January? Um, he was over to her house frequently, but I mean, he never moved out of here. Now, you indicated that your son's temper has improved. Was that an accurate characterization? Yes. Between Christmas of 22 and now, when when did you start to see that shift? Um, I would say after January of 23, and when he started coming to church with us, um, he started reading his Bible. He, my husband and I sat down rules with him. He agreed to them. Um, that improved. And has that been a consistent improvement? Yes. Have, have, can you recall after Christmas of 2022, when the last time was that you saw your, your, your son really lose his temper? After Christmas of 2022? Oh, correct. Um, I wouldn't say lose his temper. He's been frustrated by some situations he's been met with. But you and he haven't had that kind of um, argument or disagreement? No, our relationship has gotten better. Do you keep Ms. Wheeler apprised if, if the kids are, are ill at your house? Yes. And you told her about the, their involvement in the Christmas play? Yes. I even invited her to come. And she, her response was something about, I, I don't remember her exact words, but I took it that it would be awkward because she knew TJ would be there. Okay. And do you, do you fault her for that? Not at all. And your, your son, um, th does he do the laundry for your grandchildren? Most of the time, yes. I, I have no further questions. Mr. Bartell, any uh, redirect? No further questions. Okay. <clears throat> Ms. Harris, uh, that concludes your testimony. Your excuse. You have a good day. Thank you so much. I, I do have a question. Uh -huh. My mother, like I said, is not tech savvy and she's hard of hearing. Am I able to sit in with her or do I need to leave? Well, what we'll do is let you get her set up and then we'll have you leave. If, okay. if, if it's necessary, then after that, for some reason, we'll have you come back in and help her. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'll go get her. Okay. Yeah, that's you. who I'm going to call, Your Honor. Okay. It's Joyce Kratz. Okay. 
And do you know Thomas Baker? Pardon? Do you know Thomas Baker? Yes, he's my grandson. Okay. And has there been times in which you have supervised his parenting time with, uh, I guess that would be your great-grandchildren? They're my great-grandchildren, yes. And have you have you supervised his visits on a few occasions? Yes, I have. Okay. And I guess I want to focus on the time that you have supervised his parenting time. Um, have you always been around when it was your duty to supervise him on his parenting time? Yes, I have. Okay. So you have always been watching him interact with the children? Yes, I have. Okay. <laughs> During that time, have you ever seen him... Uh, be physical in an inappropriate way with the children? I never have. Okay. And could you generally describe to the court his interactions with the children? Well, when, when I'm here, he, he's always playing with the kids are always playing with him. He, uh, if they need something, they come and ask their daddy. I'm, I'm generally just sitting there watching what's going on. And, uh, He's just been doing his daddy, daddy duties. They, if they need something, they come to daddy and ask him. They, he, he cuddles with them. He plays with them. They love him. I have, I have never seen anything, you know, that it's, it's always been good. Okay. So it's always been a positive rea it, reaction it, between the two of the children and him. Yes, it has. I, it, they've always been good with him. Okay. And do you also attend church with? Thomas Baker and his children? Yes, I do. And how do how does that go? How well, well is the, it? The, the kids go up to the their class and we, we're in the sanctuary. Does it appear that the children like to go to church? Yes, they love to. They're always asking, is this are we going to church? Are we going to church? They love it. And does Mr. Baker get angry with his children? I have not witnessed that. If if the kids are fighting or something, he he will talk to them and he might put one in time out for a few minutes, but I've never seen him get angry while I've been here, no. And does he make sure that the children are fed? Oh yes, yes. He's always he's always uh if they if they want if they're hungry, you know, tell their daddy and he'll go get him something. He he helps when Paula cooks, he helps serve the food for them. Yes, he's he does. He cooks their breakfast. Okay. And he, and he, does he make sure that they're appropriately clothed? Yes, he does. Yep. He bathes them. He combs their hair. He, the other day he was even washing their laundry so they could put clean clothes on to go back home. Yes, he does. And does he do any educational activities with them that you witness? Yes, he does puzzles. He if they they'll bring him a, a book and he'll go with the book for look at the book with them and he, they do they do things on the table games and stuff yes and if the children are sick does he uh, attend to their needs yes he does and what does he do well he, he'll he'll check and make sure that that uh they're okay. Uh, he'll if they need something like a their a drink or something. He he gets it for him. He he checks on them to make sure that they're feeling all right. Checks their temp. Yes, he does. And do you love your great grandchildren? Pardon? Do you love your great grandchildren? I sure do. <laughs> okay. And would you put them in harm's way? No way. No way. Okay. And do you think uh, it would be appropriate for Mr. Baker to have unsupervised parenting time and expanded parenting time with uh, his children? I think it'd be fine. I have never seen any negative uh, activity with him. I, I, they love him. They love to be with him. Okay. okay. So at least everything you've witnessed between Mr. Baker and the children, his children, have been positive? Yes, it has. I have. I, I've been thinking I have not seen anything negative when I've been here with them. OK. And how often are you uh, with Mr. Baker and his children? I've been with them for several times when Paula's had to go to work. I've been here okay. two and three hours at a time. Okay. And then she comes back home.
Have you seen any, I guess, improvement by Mr. Baker in the last year or two, I guess, with regards to any anger or anything like that regarding him? Yeah, I I really haven't uh, seen any anger in him when I've been around him. Yeah. He, you know, he might have a discussion, but, and, and I don't, I, it just really, I haven't seen the anger, any anger. Okay. No further questions, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. McNiff, any uh, cross? I, I have no questions for Ms. Kronz. Okay, Ms. Kronz, uh, that will conclude your testimony. You're free to go. Have a good day, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much. Next witness, uh, Mr. Bartell. Your Honor, I'm finished. Okay. You rest? I do rest, Your Honor. I couldn't do it as quick as Dick Stevens, but I tried my best. Okay. I won't touch that, Mr. Bartell. I won't, <laughs> but I won't. <laughs> uh, I see it's uh, about ten to twelve, uh, Miss McNiff. Just so we know, how many how many witnesses are you going to have? Um, I have three, um, potentially okay. two, depending on on Mr. Aaron, Mr. Mr. Aaron, Mr. Bartell's uh, okay. cross of my client. Okay. I, I did have a witness who who was in the waiting room all morning, and she had to leave for a doctor's appointment. I, I believe that she will be able to return. Uh, okay, this that, that was when 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 we had the break. Miss Howard uh, came in, and uh, Miss Woodard talked to her, and she she mentioned that, and she Miss Woodard uh, recommended that she contact your office, Miss McNeil, and, and she did do that. So I, I anticipate that after her doctor's appointment, she will be back. Okay, uh, so why don't we do that? Why don't we break uh, for uh, noon lunch, and then we'll be back uh, at one o'clock and reconvene. Ms. McNiff, uh, you can call your first witness. Do we have uh, Ms. Howard in, in the waiting room? We do. Go ahead, Ms. McNiff. M Ms. Howard, this is Lisa McNiff, Jennifer Wheeler's attorney. Can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Howard, where do you live? Greek. And do you work? No, ma'am. Are, are you on disability? Yes. Can you tell us what, what you're on disability for? A learning disability. Okay. And do you um, do you have children? Yes, ma'am. How how many children do you have? Two boys. How how old are they? Nine and eight. Do you know uh, Mr. Thomas Baker? Yes, ma'am. And how do you know him? He was my ex. And how long did you date him? Um, a year and a half, I believe it was. And did you ever have a period of time where you broke up? Yes, ma'am. And when was the first time that you broke up? Last year, around January 28th, I want to say. Did you ever live together? He lived at my house with me. And for how long did he live um, with you? About a year and a half, the whole time we were together. The first and time. Were there any significant periods of time when you uh, were not together? Um, yes. What, what was that time frame? That was um, January of last year when he had choked me in my own living room. Okay. And I have a police report on that too. Okay. And that was around January 28th of 2023. Yep. And tell me what, what happened to cause that breakup? He had grabbed me up cause he was getting in my purse for the house key after I had broken up with him. Okay. And he and grabbed me up because I started hollering at him. He grabbed me up with the teeth with my crop top on and yanked me up off of my chair and put me onto the floor. Did he cause he any injuries? Top of me. Did he yes, cause me? Ma'am, I have pictures. Okay, can you describe the injuries? I had his hands prints around my neck, and I had a gouge in my left leg. And and you said that you made a police report. Yes, ma'am. And do you know whether any charges were were made against Mr. Baker? I don't know. Okay. Did you ask for the 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 police to charge him? Yes. Okay, but you you never were called to court or anything like that. No. Okay. And, I called his probation officer. Okay. And after that incident, uh, how long were you separated? Oh, I don't even know. Six, seven months. And he said that he had gotten on medication and he had changed in a month into this relationship. It was just the same abusive stuff. So when you say the same abusive stuff, what, what are you... abusive and 
and mentally abusive. He, he didn't get physical the second time because I was not home. And when you say he was mentally abusive, what kinds of things would he do that you considered mentally abusive? I got abusive? a whole voice clip that I can like send you guys. Well, we can't, he we can't. He my house. We, we can't really do the, a, a video clip, but if you can describe what, what would happen when he would mentally abuse you, what kinds of things he would say? Demand me to see him, demand me to speak with him. He would get different numbers and message me, like different Facebook. And, I'm in the process of getting the PPO also. Okay. And when, uh, when you were together, did you ever spend time with his children? Yes, ma'am. Which children do you recall seeing? Rayleigh, Macy, Tessa, and Zoe. And Jasmine, I've seen Jasmine a lot more than the girls, but I've been there both times. I've spent the night with the girls at grandma's. And when you would go to grandma's and, and see the girls, were there ever any times that uh, Mr. Baker's mother or grandmother would not be present? His grandma, I mean, he, Paula, Paula had left once and Tim was in the basement supposedly watching as the supervised visit, but wasn't upstairs. And um, one time Tessa was crying and uh, Paula had told me that she had poured water on Tessa's face. Well, no object to any hearsay. I'll sustain the objection, strike the answer. And and Miss Miss Howard, you can't tell me what uh, what Ms. Harris said to you. You can only tell me what Mr. Baker said to you in, in, in certain cases. Um, did you okay. did you observe this water discipline? I had I did not see it. No. Okay. And is is Tim Mr. Baker's stepfather? Uh, yes. And was that the only time that you saw? Uh, I've seen it, TJ whoop Tessa for crying because she was scared of a when knife. You, when you say that you've saw you've seen Mr. Baker whoop Tessa, what can you describe exactly what you observed? A bare hand on her butt cheek. Okay. And did she have a uh, pants on or a diaper on? No. Okay. Is she the only child that you saw him physically discipline? Yes. And my son also was abused by him. He would smack my son in the face and everything. And and what did you do when he would he would smack your face your, your son in the face? I would tell him not to be punishing my kid because it is not his kid. Did you um ever hear him raise his voice to the girls? Yes. The and, two younger ones, Zoe and Tessa, and, and Jasmine was it, a lot. Was it normal parenting time? Hey, don't do that. Stop it. No. No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Miss Howard. He would I be hollering at them. Did he ever use profanity? With Jasmine, yes. Okay. Not with the younger children? Not of my knowledge, no. And did was it just the one time that you saw him use the, the physical discipline with Tessa? No, I've seen him be physical with her a bunch of times, actually. And and she's the only child? She's the youngest. Tessa is the youngest. But is she the only child you've seen him be physical with in terms yes. of discipline? Okay. And, and Jasmine. Jasmine is the oldest. And, and what, have you, what have you observed him? Uh, how have you observed him be physical with Jasmine? He calls her a fat ass. He pulled her hair. He smacked, he smacked her in the face once. He's cooking her phone because she had texted her mother. Okay. Were you aware that Mr. Baker was in a class for healthy relationships? Yes. And did he ever complain to you about that class? Yes, he didn't want to go to it half the time. Half the time he would call in and lie and say he didn't have the money. And how do you know he was lying about the money? Because he's told me about the money. He says that child support takes it off. And did you see him have enough money? Did you observe him with money that he had to pay for the class? Yes, ma'am. And have you observed Mr. Baker use alcohol since in, during yes, the Yes, he did on New Year's. Okay. And did he, how much alcohol did he have to drink? Well, we drank two fifths together. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. Okay. So you each drank a fifth? Is that? We drank together. Okay. And was this this past New Year's Eve for 2024? Yes, ma'am. Yes, and, ma and how soon after that did you break up for the second time? It wasn't even 
not even a couple weeks after that that I had let him I had to let him go because he came in his car was messed up he had an attitude about that and I told him that if if I knew he was coming back with an attitude then I would leave he called me a bitch slammed my front door and my eight-year-old son was sitting right there when he did all that have you seen Mr. Baker use any drugs we okay and when was the last time that you can remember him him using uh, marijuana just last, uh, what, what month is it? March, February, February. Um, in January, when we was together in January. Okay, January of 2024? In the, yes, in the beginning of January. Okay. What kinds of things would the children do that would prompt Mr. Baker to discipline them? Daddy, 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 that's it. And he would okay. get irritated, so would Paula. And Paula was like, I got to get out of the house for a minute. And she would leave out of the house for a minute. And Braley would ask where Grandma go. I don't know where Grandma went. She's irritated and went out the house. I don't know. Dad goes outside. Thomas Baker goes outside and smokes him some weed because he went to GLH and got some. That's what he does when he gets mad. What, what is GLH? Uh, the weed shop in Battle Creek, Michigan. So when they would go outside, were they just, just like out by the door or were they gone? On the front porch of Paula's house. Okay. So Paula wasn't leaving to go far. Paula's left, yes. She has left in her van a couple of times and left us there with Tim. And then, oh, I don't know that. G there, his Gigi, whoever Gigi is, she was there once. And then there was another time where Gigi wasn't there and Tim was in the basement, supposedly. But I did not witness Tim in the basement at all. He did not come up or nothing. Did you observe Mr. Baker cooking for the children? No, ma'am. No. His mom did that. Paula did the cooking or Jasmine. Uh, Mr. Baker never made breakfast for the children, lunch for the children? No, I don't recall him ever making nothing besides running and grabbing a pizza. Did you ever see Mr. Baker clean up the dishes after Ms. Harris? No. Would his mother, his mother, he didn't do dishes at my house neither. No, no. Did you observe Mr. Baker doing any laundry at his mother's house? No. Did you see him cleaning up? No, ma'am. Did you ever observe Miss Harris discipline the children? I mean, yeah, she'd make them sit on the couch when they would act up. Okay. Was that pretty much the extent of her discipline of the children? Yeah, besides her telling me that they poured water on Tessa's face. Objection, Your Honor, as to hearsay. Sustain, strike the answer. What did you observe about the children's relationship with their father? Not so good. Did they did they want, want to come and sit on his lap? I mean, that's what they would always do is sit on him, and he would always push him off and tell him to get off of him because he was busy. Did uh, you observe Mr. Baker reading them stories? No, ma'am. Uh, did you observe him snuggling with them, watching movies? No. Did you see him playing any, any uh, age-appropriate games with them? He uh, did Legos with Braley one time, and that's about it. It, do you do you feel that Mr. Baker was effective at managing all four children at the same time? No. And why not? He don't have the patience for it. He gets irritated as soon as one they all bum rush him. Like every time he gets bum rushed, it's a it's a crisis for him. When did you were you ever present when uh, the children were leaving Mr. Baker and going back to their mother? A couple of times, and they would cry because they didn't want to go, but then they would cry when we would pick them up, too, because they didn't want to come. Okay. Um, were you comfortable with Mr. Baker being alone with your children? No. Why not? Because of his, his mouth and the way he, he punishes my kid. No, no. Mm -mm. And did you ever observe Mr. Baker purchasing clothing for the children? No, ma'am. I've seen Paula. Uh, what about toys? No. Did you ever observe Mr. Baker reading any parenting books from the library? No, ma'am. He don't even go to the library. Okay. Um, 
Do you have any concerns about the safety of Ms. Wheeler's children in, in their father's care? Yeah, I actually do. I feel like his mother should not be the person watching it. I feel like he needs to be like somewhere else and have somebody like literally be there with his kids that why do you, to do that type of thing. Why do you think Ms. Harris is not an effective supervisor? Because she has used urine for her son. I, I have no further questions. Thank you. Mr. Bartell, any cross? Yes. Uh, did you reach out to Jennifer Wheeler or did uh, Jennifer Wheeler reach out to you? I reached out to Jennifer. And what day was that? Uh, I did it uh, last year around January. Okay. <clears throat> did you reach out to her after that? Yes. And when was that? Oh, I don't remember the exact date. Was that in 2024? I've been, I've been talking on and off with Jennifer for a while now. Okay. Uh, was she the one who asked you to testify here today? I told her that I was willing to testify to get closure for these girls. Okay. So you brought up testifying against Mr. Baker? No. She okay, had. so I'm sorry. Jennifer had. And when was that? Oh, uh, last week is when she okay. asked me, and I told her that I would. Okay, and uh, you said you had been talking to her on and off for how long have you been talking to her on and off? About a year in January, it was a year. Okay, well, so were you talking to her about? Were you talking to her while you were dating Mr. Baker the second time around? No. Okay, so you weren't talking to her between August of 23 uh, until at least a week or two ago? <clears throat> yep. And you're the one that initiated the contact? I told her if she needed me, I would be there for her. I understand. My question was who initiated the contact, correct? Yes. Yeah. So, you're angry with my client, correct? No. Not at all? No. Okay. And so, as I understand it, you claimed that he was physical with you back in January of 23. You wanted charges pressed against him, correct? Yes. You say that you showed the police bruises, correct? Yes. You say you had pictures of bruises, correct? Yes. You you told them that he grabbed you by the neck, correct? Correct. And you said, I want to press charges, correct? Yes. And you never heard anything? Yes. And you say you broke up with my client the first time? Both times. Because okay. of his mouth. And his anger issues. Can you say, uh, let me ask you this. Is there anything nice you can say about my client? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Okay, and yet you got back together with him in August of 2023, correct? Yep, that was when he showed me proof uh, that he was on some medication. Okay, so yes, you got back together with him despite you have no nice things to say about him, correct? Right. And isn't it true you've indicated that you're on disability, correct? Correct. Have you ever worked a day in your life? No. Oh. So you're on state assistance your entire life? Yes. And isn't it true you suffer from bipolar? You are bipolar? No. Isn't it true you have PTSD? Yes, and that was because of TJ, Thomas Baker. And you claim that you called my client's probation officer, correct? Yep. Is it you that reached out to Miss Wheeler's counsel last January or February to say there were criminal charges against Mr. Baker? No. Okay. <clears throat> Did you ever tell Miss Wheeler there were criminal charges against Mr. Baker? No. 
So as I understand it, your testimony here today is that my client's mother, grandmother, and everyone in the family basically let Mr. Baker do as he pleases? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. They're scared of him, I'm, I'm guessing. I know I'm terrified of him. I'm about to do the PPO. Okay, that's not my question. Time. That's not my question. A lot of these are yes or no, if you could answer them that way. Yes. So as I understand, you basically have testified that Mr. Baker does absolutely nothing for his children. Is that correct? Yeah. He don't even have beds for the kids. Now, let me ask you this. Did you indicate any of this to Miss Wheeler back in January of 2023? Yes, I did. And what did you indicate to her? Pretty much most of everything you talked about here today? Yes, sir. So she knew back then that the supervised period time was not occurring all the time, correct? Do what? So she knew that not all the supervised period time was occurring, correct? Who? Jennifer Wheeler. I don't think she did, no. She did or didn't know? Didn't know until I told her. And when did you specifically tell her? That I didn't think the kids were safe in his care. Okay. When did you tell her that not all the supervised period of time was occurring? Last year, around January 28th. Okay. And rather than going through all of this, except for your most recent breakup, and what happened from August until January of 2024, you had told her everything else. And when I say her, Jennifer Wheeler, is that correct? Yes. And you had any, okay, very good. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. McNiff, any uh, redirect? Uh, briefly, Ms. Howard, you told Mr. Bartell that Mr. Baker had shown you some medication that he was taking? Yes. Do you recall the name of that medication? No, ma'am. Did Mr. Baker tell you what the medication was for? Bipolar. And did you tell Ms. Wheeler in January of 2023 that you had called the police on Mr. Baker for domestic yes, violence? Did you, yes. know at, did you know at that time whether the police would follow up? No, I didn't. I thank you. I have no further questions. Anything else, Mr. Bartell? None, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Howard, uh, thank you for your testimony. Uh, you're excused. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. McNiff. Ms. Wheeler, where do you live? I live in my home in Coldwater, Michigan. And where, who lives with you? Um, the four little girls, Braley, Macy, Zoe, and Tessa, and then my two teenage boys, uh, Blake and Dominic Wheeler. And do you recall? Um, do you recall whether Miss Miss Howard told you last year that parenting time wasn't being supervised? I don't recall. She told me last year, no. And do you recall her telling you that Mister Baker had uh, spanked Tessa? Yes, actually, in looking back over the messages, I realized that I had missed some of what she had said. But yes. Um, and Ms. Wheeler, do you work? Yes. And where do you work? I work for a company out of Grand Rapids called Serve You Success, but I generally work in Coldwater at the Coldwater store. Um, every now and again, I will travel, but for the past year or so, it's only been Coldwater based. And what are your work hours? Um, I go in at 6.30 in the morning to mom by 2 in the afternoon. And what is your rate of pay? 18.10. Per hour? Yes. Sorry. That's okay. And how many hours do you work per week? Um, it varies. Obviously, I have to miss for stuff like this. Um, I generally have been on four days lately. I need to do more, but due to child care, I've been having to make some adjustments. So is it is it eight hours every day that you work? I want to say it comes out to, what, seven and a half because I don't take a paid lunch. Um, but I daycare doesn't open until six. So that's why I don't go until 630 because I have to drop the girls at daycare first. And do you have health insurance for the children? Yes. 
And what do you pay for the health insurance? Um, no, thankfully they get Medicaid, United Healthcare. And do you agree with Mr. Uh, Baker that he is about $12,000 in arrears on his child support? Um, I haven't looked. It sounds probably about right, but I, I honestly can't tell you. And Mr. Sweet testified that you had told him that Mr. Baker was a good father. Do you do you recall saying that? No. The only thing I could think of during that, um, I actually, Bruce Sweet is a very nice man, but um, I, I'm, I'm honest. And when TJ is good with the girls, he seems like a great dad and interacts great. So in those times, he is a good father. It's just he's so volatile and back and forth. That's what makes him, you know, that's where my concern lies deeply. Um, do you, have you ever advised Mr. Baker about any school activities? Um, I really stopped talking to him probably over a year ago. When we first broke up, the women's shelter had advised me to stay away um, for the safety. And then he kept harassing me to the point where I had to block his numbers and so call me from other numbers. Um, so I stopped all communication with him. I advised him he could communicate with me through my family member or his mom because we communicate. Um, not so much school activities. I mean, if they ask her, I'll send her stuff like I took a picture of Macy's report card. Um, but like the dance and stuff, I'll tell her what's going on with them. So do you utilize Ms. Harris as, as a go-between? Absolutely. Absolutely. Would you object to there being a way for you and Mr. Baker to communicate, um, for example, through a specialized parenting time app on your phone? That would be fine. I just can't speak to him directly because no matter what I say or do, he launches into an attack and I, I literally can't take it anymore. Um, so no, through an app where it's straightforward, that would be great. Um, do you attend church? No. I used to overflow church. I would love to go there again, but between the distance and Mr. Baker and I, no, I do not. Okay. And you don't have any objection to the children attending church with? with no, I love that church. I think that's a good thing. And Paul and I have discussed that. And I've actually gone to a youth group here at our church down the street that they like as well, a children's program. So the children go to church. You just don't go. Um, they have gone to the thing. They don't go on the regular. It just kind of depends on our schedule because they get up so early on school nights. They're ready for bed super early. Um, but they do go. Mr. Baker said that you don't celebrate holidays. Is that accurate? No. Are you a Scrooge? No. I mean, when I first met him, I probably wasn't so much into holidays. But as I had kids, I got more into it for them. I was kind of raised, you know, Christmas was more a religious thing. And then they said it was evil. So um, for my kids, I totally get into it. Yeah. Right. And you, so you were raised in a religion that didn't um, celebrate holidays? Well, when I was younger, we did. And then when I was older, they went to a church that decided it was a pagan holiday. So they did not celebrate it as such. Um, but I have no problem with Christmas. And absolutely, even with my older kids, we celebrate it. Tree gifts, everything. Now, now Mr. Uh, Baker and Ms. Harris testified that at some point in 2023, you started allowing overnights with the children at Ms. Harris's home. Is that accurate? That sounds correct, yes. And was it your understanding that Mr. Baker was was there for those overnights? I honestly don't know. Um, I knew he had a girlfriend. I'd heard that he had stayed with her some. So it was just plans between Paul and I. You know, I wanted them to have their grammar relationship. They love her. But and, I, do, I don't know. I can't say if he was present or not. I don't know. And was that a concern of yours, whether he was present? Of course, but the fact that he already had supervised visitation with her, um, there really wasn't much I could do in that respect. You know, I'm not trying to keep them from a relationship with their grandma. At, at that point, did you trust M Ms. Harris to supervise and to ensure that the, the kids were safe and taken care of? So Bruce Sweet was initially the one that had approached me in regards to that because he wasn't able to with the schedule. He was only able to supervise three times. And he thought Paula, from his observation, would be able to keep TJ in check with the children. Was I entirely comfortable with it? No. But with his advice, you know, I didn't see a lot of other options. And I know Paul is a kind person. And do you still believe that Ms. Harris is able to keep Mr. Baker in check? I know that I think a lot of people are afraid of him and his temper. And, you know, that's her son. And I've told her that at the end of the day, I understand that's her son. But should he have been wrong because he's her son? No, I have concerns about that. And I have all along. But again... He was ordered supervised visitation. So, do you agree that sometimes when the children are returned to you from Mr. Baker, that they don't, that they cry, that they resist coming back? So they specifically mentioned Macy. I don't go out when they come. I try to avoid any any contact with TJ. It's very um, 
my life is more peaceful without that, those issues. So they come in. Macy's very clingy. If I drop her off at daycare, she'll hug me more and cry. She'll say she cried for me on the bus. So I don't doubt when she leaves her dad. I don't doubt that she's upset at first. But when they come in, they come right up to my room and they're happy. You know, or what, whatever room I happen to be in at that time. It's usually in the evening. Does, does Macy uh, have difficulties transitioning in general? Yeah, I would say Macy is more of, you know, the personalities are all different. So yes, Macy takes things differently than the other ones. So kind of she needs a different approach. Yeah. So do you agree that it's been about a year that there have been um, regular overnights at Ms. Harris's home? Um, I wouldn't say regular, but a lot more. Yes. Yes. And for a while, like for the Christmas program they wanted to do, you know, and she'll ask me even this past week, she said, you know, can they stay an hour longer? Longer we're doing something. And that's fine. Since the expanded parenting time entered on July 5th of 2022, have you had enough contact with Mr. Baker to be able to know whether or not his behavior has changed? No, um, he blew up my phone with like a book of messages for months. I think it stopped in 20, maybe towards the end of 22, I'd have to look. Um, so no, like I said, I, I, there's no point in trying to have contact. Did did he have contact with you around the time that he and, and uh, Miss Howard broke up the first time? Yes, he started sending me all kinds of messages, you know. Um, I don't know that I have them all. I threw phone, accidentally threw phone. Like, oh, we're well, and, here. And, and, and I'm not going to ask you. Right, I know you can't, but um, yes. And it was the variety of cycle, you know, the pleading, the threats, whatever. Just that, that so did he threaten you in any of those messages? Um, I think most of the messages I have where he actually threatened me and or the children were prior to last year. Um, he had sent me messages where he had thoughts of suicide and thoughts of homicide, where to enjoy the Christmas with the girls, it might very well be my last. Um, just a lot of, you know, my lawyers paid up, yours isn't, we can keep going to court. Um, yeah, a lot of harassment, but I just didn't respond. And did you respond to him when he was messaging you regarding his breakup with Miss Howard? No, I do not believe I did. Can you um, tell me what happened with Christmas in 2022? So for my recollection, his day to have them, I believe, would have been that Sunday. Um, and they were going to come pick them up on a Saturday night. And there was a winter weather warning. I think it was like a blizzard warning. I looked it up. It was bad. Um, I believe like nobody was supposed to be on the road. So I had shared with Paula that I was concerned about that. And we might have to make adjustments for their safety. She was on board. He was not, and it just escalated to a disaster. Did Mr. Baker contact you regarding that, that Christmas Eve and Christmas Day? Yes, um, he was threatening to bring the police, which that Saturday wasn't even technically his time anyways, just when we were going to do it. So it wouldn't have mattered, you know, just um, the usual threats, you know, that he's going to get his way and we'll go to court and no regards for their safety. And I mean, he lives an hour's drive. So being on a highway in that, did you um, try to make provisions for makeup parenting time so he could see the children close to the Christmas holiday? Absolutely. I have no problem with that. Even on Mother's Day, um, I didn't have to let them have them when we first started one year. And I said, you know, as long as they want to go, I'm not one of those parents that holds them back from that stuff. And what what was your reaction to his text messages that in, during that period of Christmas in 2022? Did you respond to him? I don't believe I did. Um, I can look back and see, but like I said, I don't know if I have the old ones, but there's no Your point. Honor, I'm going to object if she's looking at documents. Well, if that refreshes her recollection to see whether she responded or not. Well, you got to go through a process first. You can't just start looking at things. I don't have a copy of what she's looking at, et cetera. I have my text messages, but I just want to make sure I'm being honest on the dates. We, we, we sustain we, the objection unless the foundation's laid. Yeah, we, 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 can, we can move on. Um, did... Did Mr. Baker ever get uh, makeup parenting time for Christmas? Yes, I, I believe he did. After, well, probably not until he and his mom, she went back to taking them. And at that point, she had said she had made it clear like it was her time or whatever, and she was not still supervising. He could have had that makeup time for Christmas, but it got so bad during that time that I went over and stayed at a hotel over there. And Paula came to the hotel to see the kids and bring gifts. Um, we were going to meet up at her house, and she was actually afraid of him coming by and getting angry. So, yes, he absolutely could have had makeup time. Since July of 2022, has Mr. Baker confided anything to you that would make you believe that he was feeling uh, suicidal? 
Um, just like I said, that one message that he sent me saying how he had th had thoughts of suicide and homicide, and it bothered me a lot because I know how he is, but I don't even know if it was directed, you know, towards the homicide. I don't, I don't know. He, he didn't threaten you with homicide. He just said he had, had thoughts of suicide and homicide and texted that to me, which I guess it can be interpreted however. I, I, yeah. Okay. And um, since the entry of the la that last custody order, in in 21 has has mr baker called you any names been vulgar with you been profane with you um you know again i would have to look at text because i just honestly stopped responding to him you know he's told me i'm a piece of this and that he's called me a bitch in front of the kids but in that time frame i honestly couldn't tell you because i just tried to steer clear does, does mr baker call and talk to the children no and in, in, I believe in his motion to expand parenting time, he indicated that he would call and that you would not return the call. No, he would get mad if we weren't right there when he called. And I tried to explain to him that the kids had, you know, they had dance, they had daycare, they have a schedule. And sometimes I'd see he called and I'd have them call them back. Example, when I picked him up um, one time, we were sick in that call. Well, he got mad at me about that. And then he turned around and said, I haven't called because I've been sick. So I wasn't sure how to interpret that one either. So was there a period of time that he did call the children and then he stopped? Yeah, I would say the first early on when we first split, um, he did more, but he never does to my knowledge anymore, not on my phone. So in, in the last, say, three or the last year, has, has he, do you recall any times he's, he's tried to call and talk to the children? No. Do any of your, uh, your children uh, with Mr. Baker have any special needs? No. And do you think there's any reasonable likelihood of abuse or neglect during parenting time with Mr. Baker? Oh, I'm going to object to speculation, Your Honor. She can't. Your Honor, it's one of the parenting time factors. That's for the court to determine, Your Honor, based upon the testimony, not do you believe that he's going to go beat him or something like that. Well, Ms. McNiff, if you can lay a better foundation for the question, I'll allow it. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Have you observed anything with regard to Mr. Baker? Um, caring for the children that would cause you a concern i'll yeah. object your honor since we are limited to the time frame since the last order and she has indicated she hasn't seen my client she won't be able to testify to that miss miss mcnaff your response well i i think that she could answer if, if, the, if the answer is no she hasn't observed anything then i'll move on okay well let her answer if the answer is no then i guess if it's yes then we're going to need more foundational questions do you need me to repeat the, the question? I'm sorry, I, I, I do. I said, have, have, you, have you personally observed anything that would cause you concern about Mr. Baker's care of the children? Um, not since that last order that I can think of, simply because I owe no contact. Did his response to Christmas of 22 give you any concern about his, his care for the children? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, yes. And why? Because if you're willing to take your children out when nobody should be on the roads and the highway, just because, you know, that's what you wanted without understanding that their safety should come first. That is very troubling to me. And yes. Do you have any concerns about Mr. Baker's behavior towards you if you were exchanging the children um, and face-to-face and -face with him? Yes. And what I, are your concerns? It's okay. What, what are your concerns? Because the, he has no problem. This is why I stopped just shooting off at the mouth um, in front of the kids. You know, call me. I don't know if I should say the words of it. And I'm going gonna, gonna to object, Your Honor, on you. A time frame that appears <laughs> they're going back prior to the order. These are things that she said she has no contact with them. And they keep going back prior to the last order. Okay. Let's confine ourselves to the last order, Ms. McDiff. Since Since January 12th of 2022... Has there been any time that there have been child exchanges where you have felt threatened by Mr. Baker? Not that I can think of, but like I said, I've just made it a point to just avoid him altogether. Were at some point were you meeting him uh, for the early on, exchanges? Early on, we would meet at the police station or um, the out at the jail, and then we did exchanges at the McDonald's there in Tecancha. <laughs> Um, but I didn't really have to interact with him, you know, just so call it. Since, since the entry of that last custody order, 
in, in January of 22. Have, have you exchanged in the, the children in person? Have you met with him? Um, I think I've seen him, but no, what, what Paula usually does is she comes. I don't even know, even if TJ is always with her and she'll be there, she'll message, you know, I'm here and I have the girls ready and waiting to go out. And then she'll message when they come back and I say they can come on. Did, did you stop meeting him in Takancha before or after January of 22? I want to say it was after that when Paula said she was no longer the supervisor. Um, of course, there was no no reason to. Okay. And and you said that you live about an hour away from Mr. Baker? Um, I think I would have to look to see. I think it's probably like 30 some or 40 miles. Um, so he might drive it faster than me. But yes, it's the distance between Coldwater and Battle Creek. And has Mr. Baker exercised all of his parenting time? No. Um, I actually had offered even early on before, you know, it was ordered, I'd offered that he could go to the park and, you know, he, he got along fine with my siblings. Of course, after that, they weren't close, but they could be there and play. She could bring her, her kid. Um, he refused. And I said, well, if you want to take them out to eat for dinner, you know, do the gifts. And he did not unless it was. And, and, is, is, and has this been since January of 22? Um, I think I pretty much stopped offering anymore because he won't take it. He said, you know, no. Do you, do you recall if you've offered him additional time since January of 22? Well, since the visitation is supervised by his mom, um, when she asks for extra days and whatnot, they go there. And like I said, I don't know if he's there or not, but being as she's the supervisor, yes. I mean, that probably would have been available to him, I assume. And since January of 22, has, has Mr. Baker um, threatened to detain the children or keep them away from you? Mm, I want to say it was before. I'm sorry, I lose track of timelines. The one that the one Christmas where he said, you know, enjoy your Christmas and it might well be your last. But I can't say I'm going to object, Your Honor. We can't pare down the dates. She keeps saying she doesn't have communication with him since January 22. And yet all these questions. So I'm going to have a standing objection to all these this line of question about you know, communication between her and him when she already has said numerous times she avoids it and she doesn't have any. Ms. McDiff, uh... it's very simple. Obviously, it appears clear that she's saying she doesn't have any communication. She hasn't had any communication since the day of the last order. So I don't know what you're trying to get in, but I'm well, not going to allow it. I, I think she also indicated that she had communication with him after his breakup with uh, with with his girlfriend in January of 23. That they yes. that he yep. he was he was sending her communication. So yes. uh, that's what that I'm trying it. to. That was uh, it, though. She didn't say any other communication other than that he had communicated with her and that's it so don't go into other things that don't exist very well your honor um mr uh i'm sorry ms what wheeler your physician on mr baker's request to expand parenting time no i have honestly sat and thought because i think children need a healthy relationship with their father um and i want them to have that but i know how things are and have been um and I'm very scared for their safety. And this is my last effort to stand up for them. I understand and will respect the court's decision, but I honestly fear for their safety and well-being if they're alone with them. Um, would you be more comfortable if there was a, a, a provision that prohibited any corporal punishment? Probably, um, but it's just a, it's a lot of combinations of things of knowing. And are you comfortable with the idea of there being unsupervised parenting time? No, that's what scares me, but I understand it may come to that and at the end of the day. You know, I tried. And knowing that Mr. Baker is residing with his mother uh, full time at this point, are you more or less comfortable with the children being there? Like I said, I, I think Paula looks out for him. My fear is that TJ, um, being her son, I have seen in action the, the manipulation and the fear. And my concern is that things would be covered because of that. But Paula, in and of herself, is a nice person. I, I have no further questions. Okay. Mr. Bertel. All right. Thank you. Isn't it true that you leave all of your children alone with your, I guess, older children and go to the hotel room? I'm sorry, what? Don't you leave your children alone? Um, Back you around. Go to the hotel room. No, not as a general rule. Have I ever left them with adult supervision? Yes. But as a general rule, no. No, what I'm asking is that you leave all the children so they're all under 18 by themselves while you go to a hotel room? Absolutely not. Isn't it true you've indicated frame? in the last two years, since January of 22? Are so you that was no? Again? No. Oh. Okay. And so 
Isn't it true you don't have communication with your daughter Taylor anymore that you have cut her off? Yes. So she is saying that you would go to hotel rooms or leave for periods of time and leave all the kids alone. She would be lying. Yes. Taylor yeah. hasn't even lived in the home for a long while. Um, she actually got mad at both her dad and I about something. And so now all these things are coming out. Lies. Isn't it true that you have hit your son, Dominic, in the face? Yeah. Um, I don't know if on the face there actually Dominic has always had some emotional behavioral issues. He's the one that TJ was probably the hardest on. I'm just asking yes or no. And I'm answering. I don't know on the face. He was spitting and or biting his brothers while we were restraining him because he was physically violent probably two or three years ago. Um, and yes, I did. If he's going to spit or head at his brothers. Yes, I would slap if, him. If this was longer ago than the entry of the last order, I would ask to strike that. Well, Mr. Bartell, what's your response? Well, well, first you said it was two or three years ago, so I, it appears in the time frame. Um, this is new information for the court, and she's admitted she hits her kid. I'll I'll take it for that. Uh, that then stating that he does have some behavioral issues, and she's had to slap him when he's been out of control. He actually, we got his medication adjusted and got him to a new therapist. Um, so we are getting him the help that he needs. Ms. Wheeler, my questions are going to be yes or no. I know it's hard for you to answer yes or no, but if you limit it to yes or no, uh, your attorney can always follow up with As you. As I understand, you are not going to communicate with Mr. Baker, correct? I would prefer not to. Have you, in the last two years, I guess from your perspective, offered to help Mr. Baker in any way to improve himself? I told you I avoid contact with him, so no. And what have you done in the past two years to foster your children's relationship with Mr. Baker? I really make it a point to not let them know all the things that are going on um, and just encourage them to go have fun with their dad. Um, try to keep all the adult stuff away from them, their children, and just let them know, you know, that they're and free so, to communicate. And you admit that you have no personal knowledge, meaning you have not witnessed with your own eyes or something like that, that shows that Mr. Baker has not improved in the last two years? No. And did there come a point that you made up that Mr. Baker was being charged with a felony charge last year? I don't recall making anything up. We had heard that he might be charged with one, but there was no concrete. That was just what we had heard. And I'm sure you heard that from what? His reliable ex-girlfriend? Objection, Your Honor. Argumentative. Sustained, if rephrase did, it, Mr. Bartell. Did you hear that from his ex-girlfriend? Um, I knew of the altercation from his ex-girlfriend, but as far as the charges, all I knew is that there had been a police report and it was possibly going to the courts. So again, I really don't know either way. That was just my understanding. And you admit in the last two years, you have not filed a motion to change supervisor uh, uh, from Paula Harris, correct? Correct. And you admit that you have not filed a motion with the court to further restrict Mr. Baker's parenting time, correct? Correct. And you have not in the last two years filed a motion to ask for a psychological evaluation of Mr. Baker, correct? Correct. And you have not in the last two years filed any motion whatsoever to change anything with regards to Mr. Baker as to his parenting time, uh, counseling or anything correct correct and in fact did you not actually willingly agree and stipulate to expand mr baker's parenting time to uh from one hour to six hours with uh my client's mother supervising yes initially i did agree with that after conferring with bruce sweet okay but you stipulated to it you agreed to it yes okay and the court did not order that or force you to do that um, they ordered him away. I mean, my preference would have been to keep him away, but my understanding was that's what he would get us some supervised burning time. And since January of 22, you have no personal knowledge as to whether Mr. Baker exercised all his burning time, correct? Correct. And since January of 22, uh, you have no personal knowledge as to uh, Mr. Baker's interaction with his four daughters, correct? 
Correct. Unless I've seen them at drop off. But like I said, I try to just stay in the house and avoid all that. So you admit, would you admit most of your testimony here today is based upon what other people are telling you, namely hearsay, correct? No, a lot of the questions I would say were based on my experience. Yes, some is obviously okay. hearsay because I haven't interacted with him directly. But you otherwise have not witnessed any interactions between Mr. Baker and the minor children, correct? Correct. Your Honor, I have no further questions. Okay, thank you. Ms. McNiff, any uh, re redirect? Uh, briefly, when when was the last time that your, your daughter Taylor lived at the house? So she went to the Youth Challenge Academy. Bear with me because I'm horrible with dates. Um, she graduated, I think, a year ago Christmas, and she only briefly lived at the house since then. And, but when you said briefly, like, like for a day, a week? I'm thinking a few weeks. And then she got mad about her boyfriend's situation, and she just started giving us a lot of trouble. Um, she went to her dad and his family for a bit, but then they realized that she was also, you know, causing some issues. So they put their I'm going object as a speculation, Your Honor, while she was present. Okay, sustained. Yeah, let's, um, so how, how old is Taylor? She's now 18. 18? Yes. And put it, put it this way, I had a state police trooper stand in my front yard and say that I can spank and you, her. And you can't I'm going to object your honor to your stain. Ms. Okay. Wheeler, you can't say what somebody else has told you. Okay. <laughs> Have you had any, uh, any difficulties with Dominic in the last year that required any physical restraining? So he actually had been doing a lot better on his meds and whatnot recently. Um, I don't know if it's because of puberty or what, but he definitely had some violent stuff. And we actually, he called the police um, and had involvement. And now we're going to do further evaluations on him. His doctor also, again, added a medication. But have, have you personally had to restrain him in the last year? Um, just for that recent incident, we had to call the police. Okay. And is there a reason Mr. Bartell asked you a series of questions about um, you didn't file any motions to further restrict Mr. Baker's time or to remove his mom as the supervisor? Is there any reason why, why you didn't bring those motions? I'm assuming um, he was trying. Well, okay, let me rephrase my answer here. Can you ask me again? I'll sure. make sure. Is, is there a reason why you didn't go come to the court and ask the court to uh, restrict Mr. Baker's parenting time further? Because if I had, it was hearsay. Again, I wasn't directly there. And I understand that. I do know my years of experience with them. Um, but to my knowledge, they were okay with their grandma. And do you still believe that they're they're okay with their grandma? Like I said, my concern is just directly because of her fear of him, that she might not protect them as much as she should. But I'm going to object, Your Honor. There is no testimony that she fears her son. Sustained. I, I have no further questions. Okay. Mr. Bartell, any uh, no, recross? No redirect or uh, uh, cross on that, Your Honor. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ms. McNiff, next witness. I have no further witnesses. I rest. Okay. And I'm even faster than Mr. Stevens. Okay. Great. <laughs> uh, Mr. Bartell, any uh, rebuttal? No, Your Honor. Okay. Looks like that uh, concludes the uh, proofs in this matter. So, Mr. Bartell, uh, closing argument. Yes, Your Honor. Um, you know, we've heard a lot of testimony today that is uh, pretty diametrically opposite of, of each other. Um, it's it's disappointing and it's sad. And unfortunately, uh, this is what the court has to deal with. We had testimony from my client that he has participated in, um, in his... Um, healthy relationships classes he has participated in and in, in it's court mandated obviously probation he's had no issues on probation there has been no evidence to controvert that there has been no evidence to controvert that he's not engaged in his healthy relationships classes and it has uh, learned stuff from his classes um except for his ex i guess and i'll get to that in a second as to her testimony i guess here today um but the testimony overwhelmingly uh from my client, the supervisor, uh, actually both supervisors, meaning my client's mother and grandmother, show the close relationship that my client has with the four children. Uh, everything that he does for the children, and I'm not going to list them all, the court heard it, uh, that the, the children are attached to him. They want to see him more. They cry when they have to go home. 
in, in fact, may see they have to uh, coax her out of the vehicle because she does not want to go home to plaintiff's mother. Um, we have heard all of this testimony as to Mr. Sweet. He was told by the court to provide a letter, an update letter, and he had provided it a while back. He indicated that what he saw during the supervised parenting time was appropriate. He thought that the children were close. And I understand where opposing counsel is going to say, well, we don't really know everything going on. We have three short time periods, an hour apiece. But let's not forget these children showed true emotions. They weren't forced to get along with my client. They weren't forced to give them hugs. They weren't forced to have that connection with my client. Okay. Even if nothing inappropriate happened, as suggested by the other side. We also heard testimony from uh, Mr. Sweet, who obviously has a wealth of knowledge and experience, in his opinion. He believes this two year period was long overdue. He had indicated that if there's unsubstantiated third parties, such as my client's ex girlfriend coming in and just saying a bunch of stuff, or Miss Wheeler, with all due respect, just saying a bunch of stuff, that and this is how I took it, that that should not really be given as much weight. At least what he saw here is that he didn't have any concerns about expanding his parenting time, including to have unsupervised parenting time. I think in this particular matter, Your Honor, we had testimony from Ms. Wheeler in which she does not actually add anything of value in terms of firsthand knowledge since the last order was entered. She had indicated, I guess, there were some messages from my client. My client had acknowledged uh, some messages, uh, but he has taken the steps to improve himself. He has admitted his wrongs. He has admitted his shortcomings. He has admitted he has worked at himself. I haven't heard that from one other person, of one other party here, because everything, obviously, is my client's fault, right? Now, with regards to my client's ex-girlfriend, uh, I, I don't know. I, I didn't find her quite believable. That's for the court to determine. I would just point out, Your Honor, we have someone who says basically my client's the worst person out there. She can't even think of one nice thing to say about him, period. Yes, she dated him, broke up with him, got back together with him, and here she is with a vengeance to come after him is how I take it, Your Honor. I mean, she supposedly provided all this information to Miss Wheeler Miss Wheeler had all this information a year ago. My client's beating the kids again. My client isn't really exercising parenting time. He's not really watching the kids. He's not doing this and that. I mean, just everything you can imagine just against my client. The worst in the world. No motion. No motion whatsoever. To change parenting time, limit it, seek additional whatever may needs to be done to get some help here. It's not very credible when you have the ex of someone coming in who says, I had all these bruises on me too, and he was choking me out. And I told the police to cite all this evidence, and then they didn't charge him. Uh, this court is very well aware that this prosecutor's office would have charged him. So I'm suggesting to this court that unsupervised parenting time is appropriate, given all the testimony here today, especially if you give the weight to appropriately with what the witnesses indicated and the lack of credibility as to some witnesses, lack of information from other witnesses. Uh, and we would ask for my client's parenting time to be expanded. Um, we think uh, that standard parenting time at a minimum would be appropriate here, Your Honor, and for child support to be uh, changed uh, to reflect the, the the change in parenting time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Ms. McNiff? Your Honor, clearly my, my client is at a disadvantage as, for the reason that she she's not present in Mr. Baker's home. She can't see what's going on. The children are very small. We're talking, you know, eight, eight to four years old. Uh, even if she could rely on what they said, she shouldn't, uh, and, and, and it would be hearsay. So she has no choice but to rely on what uh, Ms. Harris and what Ms. Howard have, have testified with regard to the children. I don't think there's been any allegation that Mr. Baker has been beating the children. The allegation was that he spanked Tessa. Tessa is very small. She's 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 a little girl. We would prefer that there not be any corporal discipline. We don't feel like that's that's appropriate. These especially with with the tender ages of these children. Uh, Tessa's three. Uh, there should be absolutely no reason why why that type of discipline is necessary or why why one child would be singled out 
uh, against the other. There, there certainly are discrepancies in the, in the testimony here today. On the one hand, we have Ms. Harris saying, yeah, I didn't speak to my, 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 my son for a month because he was not appropriate during the, the Christmas season of 2022. That was just over a year ago when Mr. Baker was throwing a fit because Ms. Wheeler and his mom determined that it was unsafe for the children to be driven around on icy roads and sub-zero temperatures. That was an appropriate adult decision for the two women to make. But Mr. Baker didn't like it, and so he tried to force a change. And that's been the problem with Mr. Baker for a long time. We understand he's going to this class. He's going to this class not because he wanted to go, but because he was court-ordered to go because he had a, a conviction for domestic violence. He, Ms. Howard testified he complains about the class. Well, of course he's going to tell this court that he's invested, that he enjoys the class, that he's learning things. He's complaining to his girlfriend on the other hand that it's a pain to go to it. He doesn't like to go. He doesn't have the money to go. He, he doesn't want to do that. Mr. Baker testified that he hasn't, he doesn't drink. He doesn't, he doesn't, he used to use marijuana. He doesn't use marijuana anymore. His girlfriend said, yeah, New Year's Eve, not that long ago, we, we had two, two fifths of alcohol, which is a lot of alcohol for two people to consume. Uh, she indicated that he, he was drinking it with her. Uh, she indicated that not so long ago, in, in January of this year, he was smoking marijuana. Your Honor, I understand people drinking on New Year's Eve, if that's what they want to do, and the children aren't around and they're not driving, that's not that shouldn't be a problem. The same with marijuana. If two adults want to smoke marijuana and there are no children around, that's 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 their choice. What I have an issue with is, is not telling the court the truth about it. You know, be honest about it. If that's what's happening, that's what's happening. But 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 don't don't try to act as though there's there's no issue and that you're a saint if, if that's not quite the case. Just lay it all out so that the court can have the honest facts and, and make that determination. It, wasn't that long ago that, that Ms. Howard testified that Mr. Baker was being violent with her, that he choked her, that he bruised her, that he hurt her. So this, I, and, and, and more recently, he has been mentally abusive and verbally abusive and, and, and blowing up her phone. Ms. Howard's testimony about the way Mr. Baker communicates is the same as Ms. Wheeler's testimony. And even Mr. Baker's mother indicates that he has a temper, he has a short temper, and that not that long ago, a year ago, she was struggling with his temper as well. While it's commendable that Mr. Baker is going to church, while it's commendable that he is working on himself, maybe it's not quite, he's not quite done yet on working on himself in order to take care of these four little girls. Four children for anyone would be difficult, would be frustrating, uh, would, would, would require a lot of patience and a lot of work. Uh, Mr. Baker has a history of not being patient. And I would suggest to this court that we need a longer track record of him continuing to go to church, continuing with this class, continuing to hopefully abstain from alcohol and, and any, any other substances when he has the children. But Ms. Howard's testimony and Mr. Baker's testimony were diametrically opposed. And Ms. Wheeler's concern is only for the safety of the party's children. We would ask that because Mr. Baker continues to live with his mom and having his mom uh, supervise this, this parenting time is, is not a hardship when she lives there, that that would continue. We would also ask that the children be provided with with beds so that they have an appropriate place to sleep when, when they are there for an overnight, if, if the court is going to order overnights. We would ask for a prohibition against physical discipline we would ask that the court require the parties to communicate through either our family wizard, or I believe there's a free app that uh, is just as effective, but wouldn't be as burdensome financially on these, these parties, but that they communicate through an appropriate app that would monitor the, the tone and the frequency and who looks at messages and who responds to messages. Uh, but at this point, Your Honor, I, I think that it makes more sense to allow Mr. Baker to continue to do the work that he needs to do and that he says that he is doing in order to learn how to control his temper, control his tongue, make sure he's keeping his hand, hands to himself and, and not using any substances that would exacerbate that temper. So we, we are opposed to the expansion of parenting time other, um, and, and, and would ask that the current order stand and that, that, that Ms. Harris continue to supervise. Okay, thank you. Mr. Bartell, any additional uh, yeah. argument? Yeah, just real briefly, Your Honor. Uh, they keep saying that long ago. It was over a year ago for a lot of these things that they're mentioning, or two years ago. And as Bruce Sweeney had indicated, it's long overdue in his opinion, his professional opinion. Second, I think it's very telling here. You never even heard in the closing argument. You never heard in direct testimony or otherwise from plaintiff. What are even the triggering events that allow Mr. Baker to get 
to unsupervised standard or whatever it may be you're on. I think that's telling because they just want to drag this along. And a lot of it is just based upon hearsay, conjecture. And I'll give you that. His ex came in and she said there was not one good thing about my client, period. Yet that's the person she chose to date two different times. She wasn't believable at all. This was information that Mr. Miss Wheeler supposedly had. She did nothing at all. Your Honor, it is time that my client get the expanded parenting time here and, and unsupervised parenting time. Otherwise, this is going to go on for a number of years if Miss Wheeler has her her choice, I guess. Okay. Thank you. That will conclude the uh, case in this matter, other than the ruling. Uh, in these uh, particular matters, the uh, court will note that uh, parenting time is uh, provided for by the statute in MCL 722.27a, and the court will go through those factors in a moment. And what the court has to look at, obviously, the court has to look at, uh, pursuant to the statute, the best interest factors, which I will go through those as well. The court does note that uh, in this particular case, it did uh, come apparent, as Mr. Bartell stated, that we did have some diametrically opposite testimony in this case. And credibility is always a consideration in any case. Oftentimes, the parties will allege that the other party or a witness has not truthful or was lying. Court has found, that, however, that inconsistencies do not necessarily mean that an individual has lied. Conflicting testimony can occur as a result of a witness's background, perception, bias, understanding, misunderstanding, or mistake. When inconsistencies do occur, the court will attempt to determine if they can be reconciled through other testimony or evidence. Uh, there really was, in this particular case, between the parties, there were no inconsistencies. Uh, there was no conflicting testimony, and I'll go through that in a moment as well, because as the plaintiff has stated, she's not had any contact with the uh, defendant because she cut that off approximately two years ago. The only contact she had was some communication from him, I believe, in January of 2023 when he broke up with Miss Howard. But there is no testimony from her as to the things that we would normally see in a case uh, based upon someone if they were to file a motion or something of that nature. Uh, in this case, as I go yeah, through the, the factors of the uh, Child Custody Act, is under the best interest of the child test, the court has to look at, and I will look at first, is the uh, first factor the court has to consider is the love, affection, emotional ties existing between the parties involved and the child. There's no doubt in this matter that, uh, again, there's love, affection, and other emotional ties existing between both of the parties and the children. They, they do appear to have a good relationship with the uh, the children. Uh, there's been less testimony of, from the plaintiff to this fact, but I take that as that there's not been a dispute in this uh, particular matter. The issue is whether, again, the defendant has that sort of a relationship. Uh, I do note, looking back at, uh, at uh, Mr. Sweet's... Uh, report in this matter. Now, I note that that was some time ago, so the court doesn't give a lot of credence as to anything current because Mr. Sweet has not had any uh, current up-to-date communication or whatever, but he did state at that time, and at that time it was after the incident that apparently gave rise to the uh, problem between the parties, and he stated at that time that Mr. Baker and his daughters are quite engaged with each other, talking plain, clearly enjoying the togetherness. He also testified that uh, Mr. Baker has shown his affection to each of the girls while respecting their boundaries. The girls have equally are equally affectionate of their father. Stated that Mr. Baker seems well connected with his children and seem very com and they seem very comfortable with him. So the court takes that into consideration at that particular time. There's been testimony today from uh, the defendant as to his relationship with the children. The uh, again the. Uh, affection shown by them towards him uh, when they, in fact, as uh, his mother stated that when they pick up the girls, she'll stand there and hold her arms out and the girls run to the defendant rather than to them, to her. And then they will kind of make a joke about that, but it shows that clearly they have that relationship with the defendant. It's also testified that again, that there's a lot of hugs, a lot of, I love you's things of that nature between the children and him. 
Next factor is the capacity and disposition of the parties involved to give the children love, affection, guidance, and continuation of the education, raising them in a particular religion or creed. The testimony is that the uh, defendant does go to the uh, church that he went to when the uh, parties were together, that the girls really like that, that uh, they uh, love going in church. They have been in various plays or programs in church, and it does appear that the uh, he has had the capacity and disposition to give them love, affection, and guidance through the testimony that they come to him when they have issues, that, uh, again, he talks to them, that he explains things to them, and otherwise shows that guidance. There's been less testimony about the education and that he believes that he has somehow been, uh, if you would, has been frozen out on that. But I will tell Mr. Baker, the statute does provide that you have a right to get any information from schools or doctors or whatever, if you wish to do so. So uh, just for future reference, you have a right to make that request and try to get that information. Next factor is the capacity and disposition of the parties involved to provide the children with food, clothing, medical care, and other remedial care, recognizing the place of medical care and material needs. The testimony of the defendant is that he has provided for that, that he has, in fact, provided clothing for them uh, to, the, to the extent that when the children come, he uh, takes the clothes that they came in. He will, he launders those. He has those available to put them back into that when they go home because he has all the clothes that he needs. He's also testified that he fixed them breakfast, lunch, and that his mother will fix the dinner, but he helps clean up, that he helps uh, serve them. That is consistent with the testimony of his mother in this case. Uh, it is consistent with Miss Harris. It's consistent with the testimony of his grandmother, as well, they observe, although she's been there less often, but she has observed that and she testified to that. So the court does believe that he's provided for those material needs. Next factor is length of time is the uh, child is living in a stable, satisfactory environment and desirability of maintaining continuity. Obviously, the uh, defendant has resided with his mother. He stated he's doing that as a result of uh, economics, that he doesn't have the ability to uh, leave that home. So there's no chance that that is going to change. And uh, so the court is taking that into consideration. Next factor is the permanency of the family unit, the existing or proposed custodial home or homes. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any change in that. He did have a relationship uh, with uh, with the ex-girlfriend uh, who had testified in this uh, particular matter that she, uh, in fact, testified that they had uh, separated the last time back in January of 2000. Uh, 23, and that they have not been together since that time. Uh, that's Miss Howard. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any other relationship ongoing or things of that nature, so the court's taking that into consideration. Next factor is the moral fitness of the parties involved. Uh, not been a lot of testimony about this. The issue had come up, I guess, tangentially about the uh, issue that came up with uh, Dominic, that uh, that abuse situation that allowed, or I guess occurred and resulted in the parties separating at that point. Uh, although the court would note that uh, Miss Wheeler had testified that uh, Dominic is a handful and it appears that he is. He has had issues. He's been on medication. They've had other issues. He's had to change medication. And as she said, she's had to resort to physical uh I want to say violence, but physical uh, uh, restraint, et cetera, or punishment on him as well. So the court is not putting as much stake in that as I think that the plaintiff would want based upon the history in this matter and reliance upon this particular situation. Next is the mental and physical health of the parties. There's been no testimony about any mental or physical health issues. Somewhat, I guess, from... Uh, Again, Ms. Howard, and I'll address that in a moment. Next is the homeschool and community record. There's not been a lot of testimony on that issue uh, as it relates to the uh, defendant in this matter. Obviously, there's court did not interview the children, so there is no uh, issue as it relates to the uh, preference. Next factor is the willingness and ability of the parties to facilitate and encourage a close and continued parent-child relationship between the child and the other parent. It does appear that the plaintiff has done that. She's attempted to, uh, again, expand the pairing time to a point where he wasn't entitled to overnights, and she expanded that in 2023, giving him uh, substantial many 
she said a lot of overnights. I think at one point she testified that it was eight, but it does appear that based upon the testimony of uh, of uh, his mother in this matter, that there may have been more than that, uh, as Miss Harris testified about again about all the contacts that they had and that that the plaintiff had been willing to provide for that other uh, particular parenting time. The next factor is domestic violence, regardless of whether violence was directed against or witnessed by the children. Not been a lot of testimony about that. There's been some testimony about uh, the uh, defendant engaging in name calling and uh, that type of thing. There's been testimony about the uh, matter with, uh, again, with uh, the girlfriend in this uh, particular matter and uh, uh, Ms. Howard's testimony about some domestic violence, which I'll, I'll address in a moment. Next is any other relevant facts uh, to the particular dispute. Only thing the court notes as relevant is uh, obviously the defendant has in his custody Jasmine, a child from another relationship. And uh, again, there was testimony about the uh, relationship between all of the girls and Jasmine and how they have a good relationship with her. And uh, so the court is taking that into consideration. But obviously, in uh, Miss Wheeler's situation, she has two children in her custody that uh, the girls have a relationship with as well. Uh, so I am taking all of that into consideration in considering the issue of pairing time. In this matter, the court has to look at, uh, again, the factors is whether there's any special circumstances or need of the children. In this case, there's been no testimony about any special need of the children. Next factor is whether there are less than one. That's not applicable in this case. The next factor is, again, the likelihood of abuse or neglect of a child during parenting time. Uh, again, there's been no testimony about that, save it might be from uh, Ms. Howard. And again, I'll address her testimony in just a moment. Next factor is the likelihood of abuse of a parent during the exercise of parenting time. Well, Ms. Wheeler has stated that in the last two years, she's not had any contact with the defendant during the uh, parenting time uh, exchanges, and therefore that doesn't exist in this uh, particular matter. Uh, next factor is the inconvenience or burdensome impact of travel. That it's for approximately an hour when they do the transportation. There's The uh, defendant is doing that transportation. The uh, plaintiff is not, uh, again, contributing to that. But again, there's instances where the children have to travel for more than an hour, and that is not burdensome uh, in the other cases that the court's well aware of. Next is whether the parents reasonably expected to exercise court-ordered parenting time. The court does believe that based upon the testimony that the defendant would exercise his ordered parenting time. There had been some testimony about, well, that he didn't call and that uh, she would have given him extra time, but he didn't ask for the extra time. But again, that's somewhat uh, a result of the lack of a relationship between the parties in this particular matter or their ability, inability to communicate. Next factor is whether a parent frequently failed to exercise parenting time. Uh, that has not occurred in this matter, and the court has not heard any testimony or evidence of that. Next is threatened or actual detention of the child. There's been no testimony about that. Uh, next, any other relevant factors in the particular case. The court does believe that there are other relevant factors in this case. Uh, those relevant factors were testified that uh, in this particular matter that the, uh, the court is considering that the uh, defendant has been through, again, court ordered that he has been through the classes, not all of them, but 20 tomorrow, as he said, tomorrow will be 20 of the 26 classes through the healthy relationships uh, classes that he's taken in this uh, particular matter. The court doesn't look at uh, just his testimony about what happened in this in regard to these classes. Uh, the court will note that, again, the individuals that had testified, being his mother, Paula Harris, she had testified uh, that she has never seen defendant put the children in any danger, that she has seen a lot of improvement in the defendant from these classes. Uh, 
noted that uh, when instances would occur where he would normally get upset and go off, that he will take a step back, he walks away, uh, that he would initially be upset in those instances, and he did not demonstrate that. In this case, she mentioned a, a, some situations involving her husband where there have been some situations with the defendant and he's walked away. The court would note that uh, the testimony of Ms. Howard in this case is that, oh, he's violent, he's this, he's that. But again, she's testified that she hasn't had uh, the relationship with him in uh, 2023 after they separated. Uh, and as a result, the court is not putting a lot of weight in that because, again, he was not having many, he'd not engaged in many of those classes when Ms. Howard had testified about, again, the things that she claims that he had done. court does believe in looking at that, that the court does believe that the defendant has uh, been invested in the classes, notwithstanding the arguments of counsel or whatever, but the, he was able to demonstrate through his testimony some specific instances where he handled them differently, specific instances on things that he had learned in the classes, in the, uh, I guess, the presentation he had to make in the class, and it shows that he has been invested in that. And so the court's taking all that into consideration. I want to address, uh, again, Ms. Howard's testimony because it's obviously diametrically opposed to everything else that the court heard in this case. Uh, in this case, uh, she's talked about, uh, again, physical violence, anger issues as well, that uh, uh, she testified, she quite frankly testified about all the testimony uh, that every other witness is given and in a diametrically opposed uh, position. Testified that the defendant didn't do any cooking, testified he didn't clean up, he didn't do any laundry, uh, that in fact, uh, he would get upset when the kids would go, you know, daddy, 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 et cetera. That's contrary to all of the other testimony we've heard from the other witnesses. She testified, well, the kids will want to sit on his lap. Clearly, uh, she even acknowledged, I think indirectly, through that, that they would want to get up on his lap and sit, that they have a close bond and relationship with him. However, he would push them off, as she said. He'd never read to them. He'd never have movies with them. One, on one occasion, he did play Legos with one of the kids. Uh, and she did acknowledge as well that on one on a couple of occasions that the children didn't want to go back to the plaintiffs. Again, I think contrary to what she was attempting to do, that paint the uh, defendant in the most and worst situation that she could, <clears throat> some of these instances, uh, I guess, seep through to show that uh, uh, that again he did have the relationship with his children that she did not want to acknowledge. She testified she was the one that sought out the plaintiff, that she was the one that was willing to testify. Uh, and quite as Mr. Bartell points out, she said she could not say anything nice about the defendant, not one thing. And that's <laughs> surprising because the courts heard some, in the past, heard some very horrific instances and cases. And when that happens, the party at least has something that they can uh, state in, I guess you say, as a benefit of the party or as a positive quality. But Ms. Howard had no uh, good things or anything to say well about uh, uh, Mr. Baker. I think when I look at the pleadings in this matter, as well as the way that the proofs went, that it did appear that the plaintiff did take at face value all of the testimony of Ms. Howard in this matter. And although Ms. Howard basically told a litany of bad acts and bad behavior on the part of the defendant, that she related that to uh, Ms. Wheeler a year ago, Ms. Wheeler didn't take any action. As response to questioning from Mr. Bartell, 
that she didn't uh, I'll go specifically didn't file to change the supervisor in the last two years. She didn't file a motion to change parenting time. She didn't file a motion to uh, for counseling. Uh, she during that time she agreed to expand the parenting time. She agreed to go to overnight parenting time, um, and she had testified she didn't know if defendant had improved in the last two years uh, in this particular case. So clear when I look at this that she had no knowledge in this matter for either filing anything or responding that she was simply relying upon Ms. Howard. Quite frankly, when I look at the uh, uh, testimony of Ms. Howard, the court has serious concerns and uh, for the, I guess you say, the uh, for the, uh, again, the, the truthfulness of that particular testimony or whether it is simply as a result of a, a scorned ex-girlfriend or uh, in this uh, particular matter, whether she is simply, again, doing it in a way to, uh, uh, again, to hurt Mr. Baker, I don't know, but based upon her testimony and all the other testimony, and her testimony does not square with any of the other testimony that the courts heard today, that quite frankly, I question how credible that is. And uh, as a result, the court's not giving substantial consideration to that, especially in view of the fact that uh, Ms. Howard stated that when the parties broke up, that uh, that uh, defendant got violent with her, that she apparently had marks, that she'd taken pictures, as she stated. She told the police that, and in fact, nothing has occurred in this case. That is inconsistent with everything the court hears in these particular matters and what the police and the prosecutor will do in this matter, and they have not taken any action. So the court, again, that makes Ms. Howard's testimony very suspect in this particular case. In this matter, the court first note that the parties do not have any communication. So the court is going to order that the parties would communicate through our family wizard or some other free app as may be available to them. I will let both of the parties know that in those apps, they keep communication that is available to the court. So if either party is going to go off against the other party, recognize some future date, the court will get that information and that communication, and the court will use that in the event that it's necessary as to some future, uh, you know, uh, relief requested in this particular case. Court will order that the defendant would continue with his health, healthy relationships class, which I know is a condition of his probation, so I have to. The court will order that the defendant would provide the plaintiff with a certificate or proof of completion of that healthy relationships class you can do that through Miss McNiff's office. And uh, if there is not, then uh, if there's not that, the court would also order that he would provide proof of successful completion of probation through Miss McNiff's office. Obviously, if there's no certificate or any other uh, thing as it relates to the healthy relationships class and having ses successfully completed that, that successful completion of probation of uh, probation would infer that, in fact, he's done everything he needed to do uh, to get that successful completion. Court would also order in this matter that, uh, that uh, well, I'll get into that as to what the court believes appropriate for parenting time. In this matter, the court does believe that the plaintiff has, excuse me, the defendant has met his burden to, again, expand the parenting time in this matter and to eliminate the necessity for uh, supervision. I'm doing that because he is residing with his mother, with the stepfather, and it does appear that he's going to be doing that for some time. And as a result, indirectly or directly, uh, again, they're going to be there to provide assistance and supervision, even though the court is not ordering at this point. The court does believe that the, based upon uh, his improvement uh, personally, that, in fact, it's appropriate at this time that the court would, in fact, eliminate that particular restriction. The court is saying that, I'll tell you, that Mr. Baker, it's not uh, just because I've eliminated it doesn't mean that it can't go back on at some point in the future, should it be necessary. 
And I would assume that Ms. Wheeler would, in fact, file a petition should it be necessary. And hopefully that doesn't come back before me. I think that uh, the insights you've gained through the healthy relationships classes has helped you to maybe eliminate the need for that uh, in this uh, case. The court does believe that uh, it is appropriate in this matter to expand the parenting time pursuant to um, MCL 722.27a. The court will expand the parenting time to standard parenting time, alternating weekends, Friday through Sunday, midweek, uh, alternating holidays, uh, alternating spring break, half the Christmas, half the uh, summer vacation period. And so the court will expand it in that regard. As a result, it'll be, ne it'll be a necessity that, uh, uh, again, there be a recalculation of child support in this matter with the change in the days. Uh, the testimony was, I think, of Mr. Baker, and I didn't find it offhand whether he was now making twenty three fifty per hour, that uh, he testified that his hours are less, but there are, things are getting better. The court is going to calculate that based on a full-time 40-hour a week. The testimony of Ms. Wheeler is that her work schedule is a little bit less as well, that she's making, I believe it was 1810 per hour. The court will consider that based upon a 40-hour work week as well. The only thing else the court would state in this matter is Mr. Baker, obviously, when you're going to have the children sufficiently more time, the court understands when you have them for a limited period of time, but now that it's a more standard time, then the kids need to have their own bedroom and need to have their own bed. So you're going to have to work on that. Uh, the court's not going to put a time limit, but you should use all dispatch to make sure that that gets done. Because again, when you had them supervised for a matter of hours, it wasn't that big of a deal. And even on an overnight basis, but now as you have them longer, it is going to be a big deal. And if in fact you don't make that improvement, the court may consider changing the uh, parenting time back to less hours and less overnights if that doesn't happen. So I'll just leave it up to you to make sure that it does. If not, Ms. I'm certain Ms. Wheeler can bring the matter back in at that time. With that, I think that uh, addresses all the things that the court has to. I'll ask Mr. Bartell, is there anything else you believe the court has failed to address or needs to before we conclude? Uh, no, I just want a clarification on that last thing. Uh, do all four children have to have their own bedroom or just no. that they have appropriate uh, beds? That they, have appropriate, that they have appropriate bed. Okay. Okay. And in, a, in a particular bedroom, not in the living okay. room, hallway or things like that. I assume that the storage room, <laughs> that they could put bunk beds in, they could get all four girls because they're girls. I don't have the concerns there. So we'll just leave it up to that and hopefully that uh, takes care of it. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Nothing Mr. No, nothing further. Thank you. Okay. Ms. McNiff, is there anything you believe the court has failed to address or needs to before we conclude? No, Your Honor. I think you've covered everything. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Bartell, I ask that you would prepare the appropriate orders, submit them to the front of the court for approval, and then submit them to the court. Okay. I will. Thank you. The court will conclude this matter at 2.48 p.m. Uh, best of luck. I hope everything works out for both of you. I hope that we, again, get this matter moving forward in a more amiable fashion. And uh, I hope that the court continues to see progress in the event that, uh, well, I hope that both of you see more progress and hopefully the court doesn't see any progress and hopefully you're not back before the court, but uh, best of luck to both of you. Have a, have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank